making sense of politics and the cultural divide from a different perspective. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant on News Radio 710 Keel. Well, hello, citizens. It's a great day in the USA, and it's Tuesday, and we're here advancing the cause of American liberty and freedom. I'm C.L. Bryant, and this is America on the Edge, where you'll not live on the edge, you'll have the edge. And we're broadcasting from within the borders of the greatest success story the world has ever known the United States of America. We invite you to stay a while. And I'm here with my co-host, Stephen Parr. Stephen, tell the folks what we got lined up for them today. The CL, very exciting show today since we have a Rock and Roll Hall of Famer in the studio with us. James Burton, Shreveport legend, the personal guitar player for Elvis the King is going to be here uh, talking about the festival coming up this weekend and uh, also some uh, moments he's made in creating a little rock and roll history. We're very excited to hear what that festival is all about and how we can help. And we definitely want to encourage everybody right now to make your plans to be there this weekend. We're also asking our question of the day. What's your favorite Elvis Presley moment? What uh, Let us know. Was it the blue suede shoes? Was it... Was it the Hawaii movie? Was it uh, Jailhouse Rock? Uh, was it just all the, the Las Vegas shows? L- let us know. What's your favorite? And you know what, uh, Stephen? Uh, there are very few people who have ever walked the earth. Let's uh, take out the king of kings, uh, who is Jesus Christ, who stands alone by himself. But other than that, let's just go to the mere mortals. There are very few people who have ever walked the earth who can be identified around the globe by one name, and Elvis is definitely one of them. It, you're absolutely correct. We're also going to be talking about what's going on in Ferguson, Missouri, we're uh, getting closer to sundown, and uh, typically when that happens, more rioting and looting has been going on, at least for the uh, last week and a half. And there's breaking news coming from Attorney General Eric Holder. He has issued a, a statement to some of the St. Louis papers. I'm going to read part of it, and I think it's going to make you angry. Uh, I don't like making people angry, um, but when you hear what Eric Holder just said, um, Eric Holder makes me angry, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he's a red flag in front of a, 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 a bull. Or in front, I don't know. He just he just gets to me. Well, he's he's waving that red flag in some newspapers there uh, up in Missouri. We're going to be talking about that. Plus, history was made yesterday as some drones, Navy drones, for the first time participated in operations with live piloted aircraft and we're going to be talking about yeah it's kind of a big deal that really is, uh, especially when you consider the, the uh, capacity that these drones... You know, people, I think when they hear drone, they, they think it's some little, you know, thing that sort of hums along like a crop duster or something. Yeah. But these things are, are, are pretty impressive. Uh, and it is part of the changing nature of warfare and, and how warfare is going to be changing over the next 5, 10 uh, years. It, going out beyond 10, I, I'm not sure we can even imagine that, but uh, the, the next five years, certainly some big changes coming up. But first, let's get to the buzz. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the buzz? Tell me Going to start with some other breaking news coming out of Texas. Uh, Governor Rick Perry has been booked on abuse of power charges. There's a mugshot. He, uh, he's not wearing the glasses and the mugshot. He's wearing a tie and a suit and... Uh, a little bit of a, can you believe they're taking my picture? I think that's, if I just look at the picture, uh, the mug shot, I, I think the look on his face is, can you believe? This is a dark day in Texas, man. This is a very, very bad thing that has happened, but I have a feeling that Rick Perry's going to rise above it. I, I, have, I have to say, Rick Perry's mug shot here looks a lot better than Tom DeLay's mug shot did. <laughs> uh, Tom DeLay had too much grin, too much teeth. 
Uh, I think Rick Perry's, uh, you know, if it's possible to look good in a mug shot, I think he's coming close. He doesn't look anything like Nick Nolte. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Or, or Mel Gibson, for that matter. Uh, no, he, he does not uh, look like that. By the way, uh, other people now are coming out, people who normally would not support Rick Perry are coming out in support of Rick Perry in this, uh, including the editorial board of the New York Times. That's huge. That's uh, huge. Yeah, in in a uh, editorial today, let me just read a, a sentence here for you. For more than a year, Mr. Perry has been seeking the resignation of Travis County District Tur- Attorney Rosemary Lemberg. He had good reason to do so. Ms. Lemberg was arrested in April 2013 for driving with a blood alcohol level of more than three times the legal limit. Uh, she verbally abused officers. Uh, how is that lady allowed to be the district attorney? How is it the district attorney is arrested, convicted of DWI? She's abusive to police officers, and it's the governor who gets indicted. Go figure, man. Go figure. It's beyond me, but I tell you one thing. Rick Perry, I don't, Stephen, have we ever, we need to research this, have we ever had a president elected who was under indictment? Uh, a president who was elected who was under indictment at the time. I do not believe so. Obviously, uh, we had Watergate with Richard Nixon, but uh, he was pardoned by Ford, and uh, that never uh, Nixon was never fully indicted for that. Bill Clinton was impeached, uh, but I do not believe there was uh, uh, an actual indictment. For, there was a civil case, and he did plead guilty, actually, to perjury charges. That's amazing. I have a feeling this is going to help Rick much more than they thought they were going to hurt him. Let's talk about where the money's coming from on the Democrat side, at least. There's a a billionaire hedge fund manager named Tom Steyer who was talking about climate change for the American Renewable Energy Institute. And and I I don't know. Let me let me know. See if you're offended by what he says. He says, I think if you were to go around uh, to most of the what I think of as, quote, super sophisticated people, who think about policy more than five minutes a month, we are doing really well. The question in the United States is, how are we doing with everybody else, which is the 99.5% of the people? So apparently only 0.5% of Americans are super sophisticated. Yeah, according to a liberal billionaire who is a hedge fund junkie, that's scary. Uh, And and by the way, he's he's talking about climate change, so apparently 99.5% of us who aren't believing in all of the uh, made up and manipulated climate data, we're not we're not super sophisticated. That that's our problem. Yeah, and that's the thing about lib- liberal billionaire um, uh, like that. They think the rest of us are stupid, folks. America is on the edge, and you're listening to America on the Edge with C. L. Bryant. Back in a minute. This is America on the Edge with C. L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Keel. If you're like most retired people, you've worked hard to save and invest for your retirement. But what are you doing to help protect your assets from the staggering cost of long term care? Most people are unaware of the potential cost associated with long term care. Right now, the annual cost of nursing home care is $75,000 a year and will only grow. Most think that Medicare will pay for long term nursing home stays. This assumption couldn't be further from the truth. I'm Blake Rainey with Safe Planning here in Shreveport. Did you know that one out of every two people will need long-term care? Fortunately, you do not have to deplete your assets to qualify for Medicaid. Safe Planning has mastered planning for the needs of seniors. This is our specialty. Let the experts at Safe Planning show you how to preserve your hard-earned assets. Schedule a consultation or join us for one of our free educational workshops. 318-869-3133. This is Blake Rainey at Safe Planning inviting you to call us at 318-869-3133. That's Safe Planning, 318-869-3133. Have you ever thought, I wish I didn't have to search for the best price on printing or direct mail? Tired of trying to design your own material on some confusing website just to get to the end and it's not that professional look your business needs? Well, stop searching and call Graphic Industries. We've been waiting on your business, ready to help you with your printing and direct mail needs. Graphic Industries offers all types of print, stationery, brochures, flyers, catalogs, door hangers, books, pocket folders, postcards, variable printed letters, and much, much more. Graphic Industries can direct mail for you, too. 
You can customize a mailing list, target a certain demographic, or just flood the market and get your name in the homes of thousands of potential clients. Lowest prices, best quality, and a faster turn time. Visit us online at graphicindustries.net or call us today at 318-222-1100. Graphic Industries, the number one choice of printing and direct mail. Hello, everybody. This is Henry Burns. God, faith, and freedom are not free. Many have paid the price. Let freedom ring. What a great radio program. Go get them, CL. If the number on your thermostat is going up just as quickly as the temperature outside, your air conditioner may have a serious problem. Give the friendly folks over at Premier Heating and Cooling a call at 222-1980. William F. Duncan doesn't just offer auto, home, and life insurance. He does it with great personal service. William F. Duncan has covered Caddo and DeSoto Parishes for over 18 years. Call him today, 318-532-4300. Tell him CL sent you. Rush Limbaugh, the authority for all things right. It's all in the mind. It's all in the mind. Remember, most days I still feel like I'm 18 to 20. I mean, there's bumps in there, of course, but you look back on it on balance, it's not a thing I would change. Weekdays from 11 to 2 on News Radio 710 Kiel. You're listening to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Kiel. You're listening to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and the maestro on the guitar is the legendary James Burton playing with Elvis live in Las Vegas. And he's our guest here on America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant. Uh, James Burton, welcome to the show and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. It, we're, we want to talk about what's coming up this week because this is a big week for you. You've got a lot. You're a busy, busy man for the rest of this week. It's getting busier. <laughs> it's amazing. We have a great show, a great lineup, a great talent, and um, it's going to be, we have a party downtown under the bridge, Texas Avenue. Uh, that's going to start at 6 p.m. Uh, the birthday party is going to be 6 to 8 p.m., and then we're going to have bands playing, lots of music, and uh, we're going to have a car show. On Saturday, the 23rd, we're going to have a great show at the Municipal Auditorium with a lot of great talent, and we can talk about that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. For folks who don't know, James Burton International Guitar Festival is just two days, 22 hours, 41 minutes, and no seconds from right now uh, getting going. And, James, I want to thank you so much for being on the radio program today for a long time. Uh, you have been, and I tell you what, you have so many admirers that you know and don't know about. And I'm one of the ones that you're just now finding out about. But I tell you what, uh, I've admired your body of work. And tell the folks here, uh, what was the uh, catalyst? What, what caused you to do this international program like you're doing now? Well, in 2005... Uh, I always wanted to do my own show, and uh, working with so many uh, wonderful friends around the world, um, I wanted to invite them to my show. And by doing that, I created the James Burton Foundation. I wanted to give something back and help the kids, and uh, which we did. We got music in schools, and um, we we gave thousands of guitars out for little kids in schools to learn how to play. And uh, the foundation, we just do great things. We go to, we actually went to St. Jude's Hospital in Memphis, gave them guitars for little sick kids, to Shriners Hospital, and also the veterans. We gave them guitars for the, for that uh, organization. Some of the kids receiving these guitars are uh, about the age you were when you first picked up a guitar. You were already playing professionally by age thirteen, right? Well, thirteen is when I started playing. But uh, these kids uh, are a lot younger, but we do have some young adults as well. And why is this something that was important to you? Why did you say, you know what, what I want to do? Because you don't have to work uh, a day. I mean, you don't have to do this. This, this isn't something you have to do. Why is it something you feel compelled to do? Well, it's, it's all fun for me, and it's great to be able to help the kids. And that was one of my main reasons for doing it. Uh, 
when we're gone, you know, they're going to take over our legacy. So we want to keep uh, our music going, and uh, they're going to do it for us. And it's going to be a, just a wonderful thing to do. And I certainly hope that all you folks out there understand just how important and, and how huge this is that is that is going on right now in our city or that will be going on this weekend in our city. And I want to encourage each and every one of you to do something. Come out and participate in this. This means something. And Mr. Burton, I want to ask you this. You know, uh, it is an, a very special thing to put into the hands of a child who perhaps in no other way would be able to experience what you give him the opportunity to experience. Tell me, and you got people like Trace Atkins coming uh, here, and that that's huge. Folks, that is huge. But tell me, uh, what does that look in their eye? How does that make you feel? Unbelievable. I tell you, it's such a great joy for such a small thing. And, um, you know, one guitar can change a child's life. And it's amazing. You know, the, the good Lord blessed me with my career, and I want to pass it on to the kids today and help them any way I can. We have two recording studios, and it's a thrill for the kids to come in and and play and and uh, get a recording of what you know how they're progressing in the music. Uh, this coming up this weekend on uh, Saturday, the the concert, the James Burton and Friends concert, is going to be at a Municipal Auditorium from six to eight o'clock. And and as Seal just said, Trace Atkins going to be here, Lincoln Brewster, Billy Burnett, who was uh, with Fleetwood Mac, uh, Doyle Dykes is going to be here. Uh, also, Richard Furry with. Uh, uh, Buffalo Springfield. Uh, they they had a, a great uh, song back in there, uh, back in the 1960s. Uh, something happened in here. What it is ain't exactly clear. I just love that song. Claim the Stephen, fame, Stephen. Don't forget that Vince Gill, folks. All yeah. of you Vince Gill uh, lovers out there, Vince Gill just announced he's coming too. I understand. Uh, Vince Gill's coming. Noel Haggard's coming. You, uh, James, you actually recorded with Merle Haggard, oh, his after, father. Yeah, a lot of a, a lot of his first records. I played on several, uh, the big records, Working Man Blues, The Fugitive, Mama Tried, all those. Uh, Big records. And that's not the only second-generation member that's going to be here. We, we also have Ricky Nelson's son uh, is coming to it, uh, Gunnar Nelson. Uh, right. And he and his twin were in the, the, the band Nelson back in the 80s. Uh, but you were really uh, uh, very influential in creating the sound that Ricky Nelson was trying to create. Pretty much. Rick and I grew up together. I was 16 years old when I went to work with Rick, and I was just a few months apart. So we pretty much grew up together on TV, uh, traveling around the world, playing on great records. Traveling Man, by the way, is, is the very first video that was played on television. I did not know that. I didn't know that either. History. And folks, we want to remind each and every one of you that all proceeds will go to charity. I cannot say it strong enough or enough. You need to be out there this Saturday. Uh, Paul Schaefer, from, uh, he was at one point part of the world's most dangerous band, uh, now with the CBS Orchestra. You've, of course, you've seen him on uh, David Letterman for 30 years or so how do you get how do you get people like priscilla presley like lee rocker like paul schaefer to say yeah we're going to come here and play in shreveport and support your foundation how do you convince them to do it hey you know they have a, a new thing now called a telephone <laughs> and your dallas number and these guys answer it's fantastic you know what was great when i was inducted in the rock and roll hall of fame in 2001 i played the david letterman show the very next night and it was incredible. Uh, Paul Schaefer and uh, the piano player Johnny Johnson was also inducted. He was the guy that, that taught Chuck Berry how to play guitar and worked with Chuck. They wrote songs together. And um, I mean, it's just fantastic. Now, I know that you've traveled all over the world uh, playing various venues. I need to know, other than the United States, what's the best, what's the country that you've been received in best? I mean, wh where, where was the most wild audience, crazy audience that you, you've been received in? Well, you know, they're all pretty wild. You know, Russia was good, uh, China, um, of course, Australia, one of my favorite places to go. I like it. Um, I go all over. I'm 
I go to Europe probably every t- month or so, and uh, in and out so much. Uh, I love it. I love all those places, but one of my favorite places to go hang out is Hawaii. Oh, yeah. You know, we did the <laughs> Aloha special there. Great, great show that we did with Elvis in 73, oh, yeah. I believe. I remember when Elvis came back, uh, the, the concert where he came back, he was dressed all in black leather. And uh, I tell you, he started off playing, um, I think it was Laudy Miss Claudie. Were you playing on that one? Uh, if it was uh, after 1969, it was After me. 69, yeah. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, you, I, you spent a lot of time with him in uh, Las Vegas uh, as, as he had those, uh, those episodes and a lot of the live albums from there that you planned. That's me. Elvis called me in 1968 to do the comeback special, but I couldn't do it. I was doing an album with uh, Jimmy Boyd and the producer with Frank Sinatra. So I called Jimmy and I said, Elvis called me to, to do this TV special. I couldn't do it. He, would, <laughs> he wouldn't let me out. But anyway, that's cool. Elvis called me back in 1969 and asked me to put, put this uh, together, this band, and which we did. We opened Las Vegas. 1969 in August. And and after you worked with Elvis, you then worked with John Denver for many years. That's correct. I did a TV show with uh, John Denver just before, well, two months before Elvis passed away. But John came up and asked me if I would do an album and go on tour with him. But I assured him I would like to do that, but uh, it depends on Elvis' schedule. But uh, unfortunately, Elvis passed away a couple months later. And uh, when I got back from the funeral, I had a phone call from John uh, to hook up and uh, go and record a new album. You know, James, uh, you're talking to two uh, frustrated musicians here. I, I was wondering, in, in another life, I wanted to be uh, a jazz uh, trumpeter, and, and Stephen, you know, he's a, he's a musician as well. But I've heard some of the great uh, blues musicians uh, like Clapton, like Freddie King, uh, you know, B.B. Uh, King, all around. But uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, I've heard some really great blues guitarists and great guitarists. Aside from yourself, and of course I have the privilege of speaking to you, but aside from yourself, who, in your opinion, who, is the, who was the best uh, guitarist, pure guitarist, living or dead, that, you, that you, you've come across? Well, when I was growing up, my hero was Chet Atkins, Les Paul, and a guy named Merle Travis. And uh, then, you know, I, I was raised on country music, but I got into ryth- rhythm and blues which later became rock and roll. It was a kind of a mixture of music, a lot of gospel, country, and rock. And uh, I, I don't know, there's so many great guitar players out there. Jeff Beck is a pretty good player. And uh, I mean, I could name them all day long. Uh, guys like Larry Carlton, good friends. I played on Larry Carlton's first record that when he walked into the studio, his first recording session, and he was scared to death, but he played so good, you know, and uh, I mean, when you find a guy like that that just plays great, uh, you know, it, it just happens. Great things happen. And, and folks, uh, everything that's in music today, country music, uh, which which has certainly some very strong rock roots to it, uh, rap, uh, alternative music, everything. You go back to the 1950s, you go back to rockabilly, you go back to the country, you go back to the Louisiana Hayride. James Burton, you really were instrumental in creating the rock and roll sound, the rockabilly sound, and everything since then has been based off of the work that you did back then. And thank you so much for being with us. And thank you. Thank you, guys, uh, both of you. Um, I love this radio station, and uh, it's an honor to be here with you guys. But I got to tell you, playing playing guitar, recording on Suzy Q, I was 15 years old when I played on it. I actually wrote it when I was 14. And Dell Hawkins singing the lyrics. And when I saw John Fogart, Fogarty, John said, man, this is the greatest instrumental song and uh, with a few lyrics on it. And it was great. Uh, a good friend of mine the other day was telling me, he said, when you go to Japan and you do Suzy Q, you change your name to Sushi Q. <laughs> <laughs> coming up this weekend this is the international the james burton international guitar festival starts on friday at the red river district under texas street bridge from 5 p.m till ni- midnight saturday there's a car show a talent show uh rocking guitar and cars and of course the james burton and friends concert at municipal auditorium 
at 730. That's 705 Elvis Presley Avenue. Make sure you show up for that. And on Sunday, that municipal auditorium from 6 to 8 p.m., the James Burton Foundation Simple Church present Guitars for Good. And if you'd like to sponsor, if you'd like to be an advertiser on the show, give us a phone call. That's 1-855-855-288-6987. Giving you the edge. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Kiel. It's a summer sizzler showcase. You could win a $5,000 gift card to any Louisiana Boardwalk store, including Bass Pro Shops. Presented by the Outlets at Louisiana Boardwalk. Look online to win at 710keel.com. Doctors Thornton, Pugh, Olier, and Watkins from the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center are excited to tell you about a new made-for-iPhone hearing aid, Resound Links. Resound Links is the fully featured hearing aid designed to connect directly with iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. Built with revolutionary technology to bring you a smarter, smaller, and more connected hearing experience. Call the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center at 888-408-6318 today to experience Resound Links. That's 888-408-6318 to schedule your appointment to learn all about Resound Links. Apple, iPad, iPhone, and iPod Touch are trademarks of Apple Incorporated, registered in the U.S. and other countries. Once again, call the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center at 888 888- 8408-6318 today to experience Resound Links. Policies issued by American General Life Insurance Company, Houston, Texas. Not available in all states. For details, visit AIGdirect.com. It takes a lot of courage to face your own death, but I'm glad I finally did. See, I was putting off getting life insurance to protect my family, even though I knew it was important. Then my neighbor's husband died. I watched her struggle emotionally and financially. It really made me face reality. If my husband died, how would I pay the mortgage, the car payments, or keep up the life the kids and I had? I realized I needed to get us life insurance right away. So I called AIG Direct. In less than five minutes, I had a quote. I was shocked at how affordable it is. Just $14 a month for $250,000 of term life coverage. I feel so much better knowing my family has protection. Call AIG Direct right now for a free no-obligation quote. The call takes less than five minutes, and you can save up to 70%. Call now, 1-800-322-1427. That's 1-800-322-1427. 1-800-322-1427. Transmission Automotive Technologies in Bossier City, located directly across from the Mardi Gras Museum in the Yellow Building. TAT is a full-service automotive and transmission repair shop using the most current test equipment to repair your vehicle in a timely manner. You can trust Ken and his guys to repair your vehicle the first time. TAT, where no job is too big or small, and fleet accounts are welcome. Located on East Texas Street directly across from the Mardi Gras Museum in the Yellow Building or visit TransmissionTechnologies.com. Robert J. Wright here back Wednesday morning with Aaron McCarty. Gossip around town? Oh, guess who was sitting together having dinner at a local restaurant? A mayor? A U.S. senator? Oh, yeah. We'll find out more Wednesday morning right here on News Radio 710 Kiel. You're listening to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr. On News Radio 710 Kiel. Welcome back to America on the Edge. That's more sounds from the legendary James Burton. What a thrill that was to be able to uh, to interview him. See, I, I don't know about you, but I'm still a little bit giddy about that. See, are you there? I thought we had CL. All right, well. Here's what we're going to be uh, talking about now, having to uh, shift gears just a little bit. Uh, and instead of talking about uh, something that was uplifting and, and inspiring, like what's uh, going to be happening here in Shreveport this week, we're now having to shift gears and talk about something that has been uh, upsetting and frustrating. And uh, certainly something that's brought, brought a lot of people to anger. And that is what's been going on. In St. Louis, in Ferguson, Missouri, after the shooting of 18-year-old Michael Brown. As one of the things that's gone on with this whole case is from the beginning, there has been misinformation. There has been information that's come out that has not been true. 
and people have been reacting to the false information, and they have been reacting in a good way. The, the actions people have been taking has led to looting and rioting and, and other problems, other arrests, other people being injured and shot. Right. And, you know, Stephen, if folks have never seen the effects of the progressive liberal machine when they affect the media, when they affect the way that you think about a certain issue, this last week has been a prime example of how they manipulate the mindset of America and have done it. It's all, it is shameless. And we had someone in, in our studio that uh, Stephen's going to b- bring up here in just a moment. Right. That, in fact, was a case in point of that manipulation. It, of the misinformation, and it changes how people feel about an event. Let me play a clip. This was on our show on Friday. We talked to uh, Dr. Artis Cash, who is here in Shreveport. He works for uh, the organization that's led by uh, Reverend Al Sharpton. And I want to play the clip, and it was something that we missed during the show. See, I think if we had heard it exactly, I think you and I would have corrected at the time. Uh, but it is something that has since been proven to be absolutely false. I just want to play the clip real quick. But I think it's important for us to understand that an unarmed young man was shot in the back, a human being. That doesn't make it right. And for the chief to come back out and to say, well, he was involved in that incident, however— they were not connected because the officer had no knowledge of what was going on. Shot in the back, Stephen? Yeah. I don't think so. And, and at the time, Cash did not know, uh, I don't believe, and I don't think we really knew uh, at the time that this was false. But it was. It was a lie, in fact. And Dr. Cash was repeating that lie. Yeah, again, he wasn't the one who who created the false narrative. It, it was just what he was saying at the time, and it was not correct. Uh, Michael Brown was not shot in the back. Uh, he was shot from the front, uh, and it appears more and more that he was shot from the front while charging the police officer. Uh, and, and this isn't really the... Uh, the only misinformation that that's come out about this, we, we've seen this uh, uh, from a lot of different uh, locations. But the truth is, and this came out today, the officer who was involved in the shooting had a broken eye socket. The bones around his eye were fractured. Now, how did he get that? Michael Brown assaulted the officer in his car. And I have a feeling that being on your back in your squad car with a 280-pound, 90-pound guy who is about six foot four, uh, reaching or trying to take your gun may put a little bit of panic in the best of officers, don't you think? Especially when he then turns around and charges back at you. I also want to play a clip from Captain Ron Johnson. Captain Ron Johnson was at a church rally this weekend. He is the uh, the head officer from the Missouri Highway Patrol who was who was sent into Ferguson to calm things down. I want you to listen to what he was telling the folks this weekend at a church rally. I want to start off by talking to Mike Brown's family. And I want you to know my heart goes out to you. I wear this uniform. And I should stand up here and say that I'm sorry. When this is over, I'm going to go in my son's room. My black son. Who wears his pants sagging. Wears his hat cocked to the side. Got tattoos on his arms. But that's my baby. And we need to pray. We need to thank Mike for his life. We need to thank him for the change that he is going to make and to make us better. I love you. I stand tall with you. And I'll see you out there. He sold out to the crowd, Stephen. Completely. He sold out to the crowd. He was not doing his job. Actually, what he did was actually incite more of this type of thing. And quite frankly, um, I, 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 I don't see the point in what he did. And saying that we want to thank Michael Brown for the change he's going to create in this community, look at the change that Michael Brown's death has created in that community. There are businesses that have been looted. There are people that have been robbed. There are people that have been uh, incited to violence. Is Ferguson better off today because of this incident that happened a week and a half ago? 
Absolutely not. And the tragedy is, is that this 18-year-old man did have, in fact, a bright future in his life if he had made different choices. And folks, as I have said before, uh, that if we talk about the the uh, track record of humanity and the track record of mankind, it is filled with human tragedy. And Michael Brown's death is one of those tragedies. But all of those tragedies inflicted upon humanity have been self-inflicted. And unfortunately, we're finding out that once again, there has been a self-inflicted wound upon humanity. And we are looking at what uh, has, it happens when we, in fact, incite that type of thing by praising it and going on the way Ron Brown, Ron, Ron uh, Johnson did. Oh, so we've been talking about some misinformation that's come out. I want to play you a little bit of what, what I think is very true. This is from Jason Riley, a reporter for the Wall Street Journal. He lays down a little bit of truth here. So this false narrative being pushed out there by folks like Michael Eric Dyson and, and Sharpton and the rest of the hustlers is, is that uh, black men live in fear of being shot by cops in these neighborhoods. That too is nonsense. I know something about growing up black and male in the inner city. And it's not that hard to avoid getting shot by a cop. They pull you over, you answer their questions, you're on your way. The, the real difficulty is not getting shot by other black people if you are a young black man in these neighborhoods. He's absolutely right, Stephen. He's absolutely right. There is no epidemic of white men. And I said this a year ago when Trayvon was shot and uh, on Fox and, and various news mediums around the country. There's no epidemic of white men shooting black youths. There is an epidemic, however, of black young men shooting black young men. And unfortunately, you don't see the Al Sharptons or the Jesse Jacksons or, as he said, the Hustlers uh, show up on until you have a white on black situation which tells you in itself that it is by design and it is a hustle so this afternoon the attorney general of the united states eric holder two hours ago published a letter in the st louis post dispatch and it was a letter to ferguson and and he's trying to tell the folks hey i'm coming i'm going to investigate and there was a sentence i read in there in cl it made me angry i'm going to read it Approximately 40 FBI agents and some of the Civil Rights Division's most experienced prosecutors have been deployed to, re to lead this process. He's investigating the shooting with 40 FBI agents. Now, why, why aren't these FBI agents looking for Lois Lerner's emails? <laughs> why aren't these FBI agents investigating the three-year-old girl who was killed in Baltimore last week? And why aren't these FBI agents looking for people crossing the border? They've got nothing better to do than interfere in an investigation that's already going on? Why, Stephen, tell us how you really feel about this. Man. I told I've you it made me angry. So inflamed. You, I mean, you're really inflamed, man. I mean, I, I, but I'm proud of you. Way to go. How about, <laughs> me, how about we take 20 of those FBI agents and see if we can go get back some of the Fast and Furious guns out of Mexico? Where's our money? Absolutely. Where where's our where where does it go? And uh, if th folks, this is the type of administration that we are now uh, financing. And if I may digress for just a moment to yesterday when we talked about Perry being indicted over cutting off purse strings, I would to God that we had a Congress who would cut off some of this foolishness that Eric Holder and the president are, in fact, trumpeting in this country right now. I wish to God we had a Congress who had that type of spine as Rick Perry does. You're listening to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryan and Stephen Parr. Coming up, we have some breaking news out of Iraq, and we're also going to be talking about the future of warfare. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Keel. If you're in need of a good plumber, perhaps you need work on your heater, or especially right now with cooling and refrigeration systems. If you need help, give the friendly folks at Premier a call at 222 1980.
SB Magazine, North Louisiana's premier publication, is your source for local entertainment, home decor ideas, gardening information, fashion trends, and seasonal gift guides. Every month, we take you behind the scenes at some of Shreveport Bossier's most fun events in Ion SB. And you'll find SB Magazine everywhere. But the best way to make sure you have the most current issue is to subscribe. It's just $16 for 12 months. Call Debbie today or go to our website, sbmag.net. SB Magazine, the pulse of Shreveport. Hello everybody, this is Henry Byrne. God, faith, and freedom are not free. Many have paid the price. Let freedom ring. What a great radio program. Go get them, CL. Louisiana Power Sports is wrapping up summer and getting ready for hunting season with the huge Polaris factory authorized clearance sale. Through August 31st, get rebates up to $1,000 on the new Polaris you want right now. Financing as low as 1.99% and you can take advantage of the upcoming Hunter's sales tax holiday now. Come lay away your new Polaris. Get your rebate. Load it up with all the accessories you want. Then pick it up September 5th, 6th, or 7th and pay zero sales tax. That could save you over a thousand bucks more. And Louisiana Power Sports is your side-by-side -side superstore with over two and a half million dollars in Razors and Rangers in stock. See Scotty, Linda, or Eric in our huge new store at 3715 Benton Road in Bossier City, a half mile north of I-220. Louisiana Power Sports, the number one exclusive Polaris dealer in the South. Louisiana Power Sports, getting ready to ride. LouisianaPowerSports.com. On your smartphone, you can check company email, stay connected with family on social media, games. and now listen to your favorite radio station. Introducing Radio Pup, an app you can get for your smartphone that lets you listen to your favorite radio station anytime, anywhere. Find out where the party's at tonight, what's going on in local news. Always be in the know with Radio Pup. Download Radio Pup in the iTunes Store or Android Market for free, or head to RadioPup.com. Radio Pup, the radio app that follows you everywhere brought to you by american wholesale mattress here's another local expert message from arclatex foot specialist if you suffer from toenail fungus stop wasting your money on creams that only mask the real problem and call doctors brian and drummond of arclatex foot specialist at 687-8447 and ask about their three visit fda approved fatona laser treatment gift certificates are also now available call arclatex foot specialist today at 687-8447 that number again, 687-8447. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Keel. Welcome back to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant. We're listening to more of the sounds of James Burton. His International Guitar Festival begins on Friday here in Shreveport. And I uh, hope you guys will go out and enjoy some of that this, uh, this weekend. Unfortunately, I have some uh, bad news to uh, to present. This is uh, breaking news coming out of Syria. Uh, reporter James Foley has been beheaded by ISIL, by the uh, Islamic State. They released a video of the beheading, um, which is um, available for anyone who wants to see it online. Uh, and I don't know why you would want to, but it, it's out there. Folks, this is why I know that America's war-weary, but that is why we have a military. That's why we should have a large standing military, because the time has come now. This is an American, and they are sending us a message. I say clear all of our people out that are unnecessary to turning that place into glass, and let's go get them. There's another reporter that's being held. His name's Stephen Joel Sotloff, worked for Time, National Interest and Media Line. He uh, disappeared in August uh, a year ago, and uh, ISIL says they have him, and his life now depends upon uh, President Obama's next decision. Do you think that Obama's going to negotiate with terrorists? Uh, not for a reporter. Uh, I, I don't think he would do it for a single reporter. Uh, I think he's going to continue the, the bombing campaign going on in uh, Iraq now uh, that is using both uh, manned aircraft and also using drones. Did they do something like this, in your opinion, Stephen, because they don't fear repercussion? No, I think they did this because they are uh, fearing the bombing that's going on. 
uh, they've had um, the, the the journalist, they've, they've had the reporter since 2012. And I think the reason they beheaded him today is because they lost a dam yesterday. And the reason they lost the dam is because U.S. Uh, Air Force uh, uh, was taking out their uh, any targets that were out in the open. And U.S. advisors were on the ground working with Kurdish uh, uh, fighters to retake that dam. So you think they're feeling the pain, and that's why they're striking out, wanting us to feel some pain, too. That, that's what makes the most sense to me. Um, yeah. I could be wrong on that, but that's what makes the, the most sense to me on that. Let's see what uh, let's see what this response is going to be. I can tell you now. You were inflamed just a minute ago, man. You turned really, really red. Gee whiz, is is that a a, a secret weapon that you you know? Well, anyway, I won't go there. No, uh, it's, it's just because we're using uh, we're using I ultraviolet. The first time I saw that man scared me to death. I tell you what, we're using <laughs> ultraviolet light here in the studio, so uh, so I got uh, I got uh, a little uh, burned, I guess. Beat red. I mean, the guy was beat red. I mean, you know, gee whiz, Do you just turn that on and off, or what happens? But, but yeah, anyway, I'm good. Uh, now. I, I can't do that. I, I, you know, but I, maybe I can, but I, I can't see it. Um, but this is something, all, all foolishness and all silliness aside, folks, this is a serious message that they are sending to us. They are saying that they are, they're willing to kill. They're willing, and, and obviously they, they are. Was it 15,000 folks they killed yesterday or day before? I don't remember that number, CL. It was it, I, I thought it was about seven thousand, but I could be wrong. On seven thousand that. that they killed, and and there's been more than that. And most of them are Christians. They've killed their own, and now they've killed an American uh, news uh, newsman by cutting his head off and sending it to us. Real quick, what CL. What more do we need, uh, CL? One last thing I want to get to uh, today for the first time. Uh, sorry, yesterday for the first time, a drone, uh, a stealth drone, landed on an aircraft carrier in conjunction with manned pilots. Uh, so they were doing some touch and goes on the deck of the aircraft carrier, and F uh, uh, F-18s were landing along with this uh, this manned drone. It does seem to me that that is going to be the future of warfare. Uh, I'm sorry I'd like to talk about that more, but we are out of time with all the breaking news we've had. Uh, we are going to be back in just a few minutes and see how I'm going to get uh, some of your thoughts on James Burton and Elvis as America on the Edge continues. Giving you the edge. This is America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710 Kiel. If you're tired of getting nickel and dime for your company's marketing needs, GI Marketing Group can help. We're a new, evolved marketing company with no monthly fees or markups and with quicker response times. With GI Marketing Group, there is no outsourcing. We own the production facilities, everything from print, mail, video, digital, and web design. We do it all in-house. Call us today at 318-222-1100 to start saving time and money. Or visit us online at gimarketinggroup.com. It's a Summer Sizzler Showcase. You could win a $5,000 gift card to any Louisiana Boardwalk store, including Bass Pro Shops. Presented by the Outlets at Louisiana Boardwalk. Look online to win at 710keel.com. Every footballer at every club, every hero we know and love, every bloke takes a spill, every lovely bit of skill, every keeper getting stick, every through ball, every flick, every ace in the hole, every stunning, brilliant goal. For every thrill supporters seek, the Premier League is every week. Watch every Premier League game live on NBC and NBCSN. Every match, every team, every week. Doctors Thornton, Pugh, Olier, and Watkins from the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center are excited to tell you about a new made-for-iPhone hearing aid, Resound Links. Resound Links is the fully featured hearing aid designed to connect directly with iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch. Built with revolutionary technology to bring you a smarter, smaller, and more connected hearing experience. Call the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center at 888-408-6318 today to experience 
experience resound links. That's 888-408-6318 to schedule your appointment to learn all about resound links. Apple, iPad, iPhone, and iPod Touch are trademarks of Apple Incorporated, registered in the U.S. and other countries. Once again, call the Ear, Nose, and Throat Center at 888-408-6318 today to experience Resound Links. Luxury without limits at Jaguar of Shreveport. Online at jaguarofshreveport.net. Hello, I'm Alice Foster. If you're a woman 65 or older and you love your family like I do, please think about this. You're an important part of your family's life, but your risk of getting breast cancer increases as you get older. Call your doctor for a mammogram now. Medicare pays for most of the cost, and it's the most important step we can take to ensure precious time with our loved ones. I work hard to fight breast cancer. Please join me. A mammogram is the best gift you can give. Do it for yourself. Do it Robert for yourself. J. Wright here back Wednesday morning with Aaron McCarty. Gossip around town. Oh, guess who was sitting together having dinner at a local restaurant? A mayor? A U.S. senator? Oh, yeah. We'll find out more Wednesday morning right here on News Radio 710Q. You're listening to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryant and Stephen Parr on News Radio 710Q. Welcome back to America on the Edge with C.L. Bryan. I'm Stephen Parr, and we've been listening to some of the legendary guitar riffs by James Burton. And C.L., this weekend, the James Burton International Guitar Festival is coming up starting on Friday under the bridge, under the Texas Street Bridge from 5 o'clock till midnight. Uh, we're going to have a, a party there. Free admission and donations. It's free. I mean, come on. It's free. Yes, and all of the uh, contributions will go to charity and we invite each and every one of you to come on out and be a part of it and be a part of a legend's life james burton is truly a living legend and uh, i i gotta throw out some props to his wife to uh, louise uh, i gotta tell you uh... she's a jewel in herself she really is and uh... she actually actually folks we were going to call our show something else and and she didn't like it she didn't like it she didn't like it and so we said Okay, you know what? We might want to think about changing the name of this, and she's one of the reasons why we came up with something else. And so we want to thank Mrs. Burden as well. God bless her. Yeah, she's one of the reasons we're named America on the Edge. So uh, Absolutely yeah, right. great for her. And, and really, I mean, CL. I, I mean, I'm I'm a student of rock and roll history. I love it. I, I took rock and roll history in college for a uh, for a course, uh, and and really the the work that he did started with Louisiana Hayride, and then when he was out as studio musician for for Ricky Nelson. Uh, Ricky Nelson was huge. Oh man, uh, yeah, he's he's big, huge. And for El- Elvis Presley, for uh, uh, just the the number of people, the the monkeys you just heard there, the monkeys with Mary and Mary, um, mm-hmm. and then uh, even he's even worked on a, a song with Outkast uh, within yeah. the, the last decade. So I mean, that's that's pretty amazing. And so you have an opportunity, each and every one of you uh, listening, to go out and be a part of a, a, an event that you can, in fact, bring meaning to an event that brings meaning to this area. And also, you're talking about Vince Gill and Trace Atkins that's going to be out there. You don't want to miss it. Yeah, the people on the on the lineup, uh, Trace Atkins, uh, Vince Gill, as you mentioned, uh, uh, Gunnar Nelson, Ricky Nelson's son, Priscilla Presley's going to be there, Paul Schaefer's going to be there. And I- folks, we want to thank each and every one of you joining us. Thank God for another opportunity to be here on the radio and our men and women across the globe who give us this opportunity, Stephen, to speak our minds on the radio. Until tomorrow, we'll talk to you then. Bye now. America strong and living free. They see the damage and the pain. Shattered light. Your station for news, weather, and stimulating talk. K E E 